Hello everyone, my name is Ambu Sewari and today we are going to discuss elimination reactions. In our last lecture, we studied substitution reactions. In an elimination reaction, there are generally two groups which are eliminated from a substance or a compound. Now, these two compounds which are eliminated can be on a same carbon or these can be on a different carbon. So, for example, uh, we have categorized this reaction according to three categories. The first one is alpha elimination. In alpha eliminations, both the groups or atoms are eliminated from the same carbon atom. For example, in this reaction, if X and Y both are eliminated from the same carbon, then it is known as alpha elimination reaction or sometimes it is also known as 1-1 elimination because both the atoms or groups are eliminated from the same carbon. So what will be the product in this case? The product will be a carbon atom which is known as carbene. This carbon has only single valency and one vacant orbital and one completely filled orbital. So on eliminating two groups from the same carbon atom, we form a carbene and this type of elimination is called alpha elimination or 1-1 one -one elimination. The second elimination which we discuss is beta elimination. In beta elimination, the two groups or atoms which will be eliminated are present on two different carbon atoms. Let's say in this case it has X, Y and on elimination generally a pi bond is formed between these two groups. That is in this case if X and Y are eliminated then the compound form will be an alkene. Like this. The third type of elimination is beyond the scope of our J syllabus. So mainly we will be discussing only on these two type of elimination reaction. Now these elimination reactions are mechanistically divided into two subgroups which are known as even reaction. The second one is E2 reaction. We will be discussing both of these mechanisms in detail. So let's start with the even reaction. In this reaction, E stands for elimination and 1 stands for a unimolecular reaction. A unimolecular reaction. A unimolecular reaction means a reaction in which the rate determining step, the RDS step, RDS is rate determining step. In a reaction, RDS step is generally the slowest step. So, 
Unimolecular reaction is one in which the RDS step contains only single molecule. This concept is very similar to what we discussed in the case of SN1 reaction which is also a unimolecular reaction because only one molecule is involved in the rate determining step. Even reaction generally has two steps. The first step is elimination of a group or atom and the second step is abstraction of a proton by some base and in case of even reaction this is the distinction point from E2 reaction that the base we will be using will be a weak base. So uh, uh, the abstraction of proton by weak base. Remember this is very important point this is the distinction between even reaction and E2 reaction. This point only tells you when it will be E2 when it will be even. So coming to the mechanism of even reaction. Let's say uh, we will be discussing three types of molecule in this even reaction. The first one will be alkyl halides. The second one will be alcohol and the third one will be ethers. Starting with alkyl halide, we will see how even reaction happens in an alkyl halide. So our topic is even reaction in alkyl halide. Now alkyl halide can be represented by Rx where R is a hydrocarbon group and X is an halide. So uh, we will see the uh, mechanism for this. Now as, as I have already told you if it is a alkyl halide it will be a beta elimination reaction. Reaction. So let us say we have a situation where C H H C H 2 or uh, let us say here is our X and this one is C S 3. Now in the first step this X will be eliminated from the molecule and a carb cation is formed which is a 2 degree carb cation. So for even elimination reaction it is very important that the molecule is at least 2 degree. 1 degree molecule will not go through even, even mechanism. So uh, here let us say this is our X in the first step which is generally known as solvolysis. This is the rate determining step. It is a very slow step. This is the rate determining step and it is the same as in case of SN1. The first step is say the X group is eliminated forming a carb cation CS3 CH CH the carb cation is formed here and again this is CH2H. Now this carb cation is the this carb cation molecule takes part in the uh, second step and as you can see this is the rate determining step and only a single molecule this is involved hence it is a unimolecular reaction so uh, 
In the second step, this is step one. In the second step, our calf cation will lose a proton. We have formed a calf cation. Now, a base will come which is generally a weak base. These lone pairs of oxygen can act as a weak base. This will abstract this proton or this proton and will form a alkene. So, if it fetch this H or this H, there are two possibilities. and hence corresponding alkene is formed if it uh, fetches this one then the product form will be ch3 and a double bond between this and this carbon that is ch3 ch double bond ch single bond ch3 or if it fetches this h then a double bond for, will be formed between this carbon and this carbon that is ch3 ch ch uh, this is CH2, CH double bond CH2. Now, uh, how to decide which is the major product and minor product will be discussed in the end of this lecture. For now, we have seen that there are two possibilities this one and this one. This is the step 2 of our reaction. Hence, uh, we saw that there were two elimination. The first one was of X, that is alkyl halide. And the second elimination was of proton. Proton elimination in step 2. Hence, this is considered as a elimination reaction because two atoms or groups have been eliminated from our initial reactant. After discussing the mechanism of this reaction, we will discuss some basic characteristic of even reaction. That is, characteristics of even in alkyl halide. So, the first one is it is a unimolecular reaction. This point is already discussed and as there is only single molecule involved in the rate determining step, so it is a unimolecular reaction. The second one is the it is a first order reaction. First order reaction. This means that the rate of this reaction will depend only on one molecule which will be studied in the kinetics of the reaction it will be discussed after this the third one is there is an intermediate formation intermediate carb cation is formed carb cation is formed as you remember the same case was in SN1 reaction. So, if a carb cation is formed, then it can rearrange. It can undergo rearrangement. And the stability of this carb cation will determine the rate of the reaction. The more stable is a carb cation, the more favorable is this mechanism. So, if uh, intermediate carb cation is formed, that means rearrangement is possible. And the fourth point is, which is unique to elimination reaction is, there is an abstraction of proton. In final step. So these are the four main characteristics of an elimination reaction in alkyl halide. Unimolecular reaction, first order reaction, 
इंटरमीडिएट कार्बोनेट आइन फॉर्म इन द एब्स्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ प्रोटॉन नाउ आफ्टर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वी विल डिस्कस द काइनेटिक्स ऑफ दिस रिएक्शन kinetics of alkyl halide elimination as told in the characteristic of this alkyl halide elimination reaction it is a first order reaction which means if we write the expression for rate the only concentration dependency will be on the reactant molecule that is the initial alkyl halide the rate will only depend on alkyl halide which is our reactant and it can be written as rate is equal to k into concentration of alkyl halide where k is rate constant and the rate is only dependent on alkyl halide concentration and not on the concentration of base which is used now after discussing the kinetics of this reaction we'll come to the energetics of this reaction energetics of even in alkyl halide so on drawing the energy curve we will find out that let's say this is our initial molecule that is alkyl halide the first transition state will be the rate determining step and the product will be more stable so you see there are four important points to discuss the first thing to note is here on this axis there are reaction coordinates it can be time and here is energy so the first point to note is alkyl halide is higher in energy than the corresponding alkene that's why the reaction is thermodynamically possible the second point is this is our transition state 1 that is current transition state corresponding to first step which was elimination of x this valley is the intermediate form let's denote this intermediate by i this intermediate was the ka cation which is formed after first step and again this is another transition state 2 which is a transition state of second step which is abstraction of proton and it is not the rate determining step as you can see this peak is higher so once this peak is crossed this peak is automatically uh, considered to be crossed and the final product is this alkene so uh, this is the general scheme of even reaction and the point to note is it is similar to sn1 reaction energetic diagram so uh, it will be easy to remember because both in case of even reaction and sn1 reaction same energetic curve is formed there was transition state 1 transition state 2 intermediate is formed hence after energetics of this reaction will give one or two example so uh, let's take example of a 3 degree alkyl halide and uh, before discussing example one more important thing to note is the reagent which is used for even in 
एल्काइल हेलाइड शुड बी वीक बेस जनरली एन एल्कोहल कंसिडर्ड एज अ वीक बेस लेट से वी टेक सी एस एच एंड द सेकेंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू डिस्कस इज देर इज हीट गिवन विद दिस बेस मॉलिक्यूल नाउ फॉर डिफ्रेंशिएशन बिटवीन ई वन एंड ई टू वी सॉ दैट इन ई वन द बेस यूज is a weak base while we will see that in e2 reaction the base used is a strong base this is the distinction between e1 and e2 but you have seen that the initial molecule the initial reactant molecule for both e1 and sn1 is an alkyl halide If you remember, then uh, in case of SN one reaction, the initial molecule was in three degree alkyl halide or a two degree alkyl halide. So how will we know when to go for a E one reaction, when to go for a SN one reaction? There should be some distinction between E one and SN one because the solvent in both the cases was in alcohol. Here the distincting distinction point is this heat. Whenever this heat is given. Go for an alkene. Whenever heat is not given, go for a SN one reaction. That is a nucleophilic attack. This is a very important point to remember. This will help you to decide whether we have to go for a E one reaction or a SN one reaction. Now uh, we'll consider some examples. The molecule which we are considering here is an three degree alkyl halide. uh let's say it's iodine or let's say it's bromine as you can say it, this is a 3 degree molecule this carbon is 3 degree 3 degree it's a 3 degree alkyl halide so the first step was solvolysis that is this is a redetermining step it is reversible in nature so the stability of this carb cation should be very high hence the carb cation formed is cs3 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 and now since it's a 3 degree carb cation it is very stable it's very stable so the reaction generally goes in the forward direction and in the second case there will be abstraction of proton this is step 1 and in case of step 2 step 2 there will be abstraction of proton from the carb cation that is let's say this is our carb cation molecule ch3 ch2 and 1h and ch3 now uh, that alcohol molecule which was taken as a solvent will come into the picture this will abstract this proton and hence a uh, alkene molecule is formed this h is abstracted by this molecule and consequently a double bond is formed that is an alkene molecule is formed now an important point to notice in this reaction is we could have taken any of the h this h or this h the molecule form will be this only but that is not true gen in general will take an example in which it will depend which h is abstracted and the corresponding product is different in this case all these three h will give the same product for example
if we take this molecule dr and the first step is abstraction of this it will form and let's say there is one more cs3 just to make this carcatine more stable and in the first step dr will be removed giving a carcatine cs3 ch2 ch2 CH3, this is the carpetine found in one more CSP molecule. Now, we have two choices in this case. The first choice is this H. The second choice is this H. Or these two CSP are same. You can say that there is one more choice, but basically these two are identical, so it doesn't matter. We have only these two different choices. And in second step, there will be two products formed corresponding to both abstractions CH3, CH, H, CH2, CH2, H, and one more CH2 is there. So let's say if our weak base comes and abstract this H, or our weak base comes from this side and abstracts this proton in both cases the product form is different let's say this is the first abstraction this is the second abstraction we'll make drawn molecules for both the cases so in the first case a double bond will be formed between these two carbon atoms so the final product will be cs3 ch double bond CH and uh, this will be CS3 so uh, this product is more alkyl substituted in the second case if this H is taken then the molecule formed in CS3, CH2, C double bond with uh, this molecule that is this carbon and this carbon that is C forming a double bond with this Now, we have to decide that which will be the major product and which will be the minor product. This is discussed now and let's say the name given to these products are z save product and this one is Hoffman. You can see uh, the carbon on which double bond is, there are two CS3 groups attached on this carbon. whereas the one in this case has only two H groups attached, no CS3 group is attached to this carbon, whereas two CS3 groups are attached in this case, in z product. So our theorem will be the molecule which is more alkylated, that is there are more alkyl groups on the double bond carbon will be more stable, that is the z product will be more stable. So let us write this theorem. Uh, there are two types of product, Z cell and Hoffman. Now Z cell uh, is more alkylated. And this Hoffman has more H atoms attached to sp2 carbon. That is, let's say if this is the case, 
here in with this sp2 carbon there are two h atoms attached then it's a hoffman product and if in this case there are two ch3 or alkyl groups are attached then it's a z safe product and the theorem is z safe is more stable so this this is about the stability and we will take one more example the last example which will be uh, a cyclic molecule this example is very important because there will be a shift let's say this is our starting molecule so the first step is same as always solvolysis rate determining step in this step this dr will leave the molecule and the molecule form is ch2 plus now it is clearly evident that this is a very unstable product because first of all it is a 1 degree carb cation the first factor is it is a 1 degree carb cation and the second factor is it has a four membered ring which is itself very unstable so this overall molecule is very unstable what will happen is there will be a bond shift and this four membered ring will be converted to a five membered ring this was the product at the end of the first step there will be a alkyl shift and a five membered ring is formed this bond will be shifting here see very importantly how it works this bond will shift from here to here and now see there was initially a bond at this place and this bond is broken so this carbon will have a vacant orbital now hence the positive charge will shift from here to here and when this bond shifts from here to here so this is the case the bond shifts here it forms a 5 degree 5 uh, degree ring and this is a carb cation so if uh, let's say somebody marks this carbon by marking means level this carbon let's say we use a c13 this is generally to uh, this method is used to identify which carbon is which one in the later product so when there is a shift to form a five membered ring the carb cation form is on star carbon sama carbon that means this bond shifts here and this carb cation shifts here so this mark carbon will be now positively charged and then again after forming this molecule it's a straight forward reaction we have two possibilities abstracting it from here or here we will give us the same product that is an alkene molecule both of these h abstraction will form the same molecule now here there can be some variations when let's say if there is a alkyl group present here let's say there is a ch3 group present here in that case there will be two molecules on which one by abstracting this h and the other one by abstracting this h and these both products are different now applying the theorem we have learned the sp2 carbon that is this carbon has a ch3 attached to it and an h attached to it 
Whereas these sp2 carbons have only H attached to it. So this is the Z shape product. Hence it is more stable than this one.